Welcome to my own devices. Did you know that if you click on the thumbs up like symbol on a video, it tells YouTube to recommend it to others? So please be generous and like as many videos as possible. It really helps and it's free. Hello, I don't know if you've noticed, but regarding uh, what formats I prefer, be it digital or, or analog, I'm rather agnostic. I, uh, you know, I like vinyl records, I listen to radio in the, in the analog domain, and I, I stream and buy CDs and, and, uh, and that kind of thing. So I, I don't have a preference necessarily. Uh, both have their advantages and disadvantages, and I'm perfectly aware of what they are. I am by no means a digital expert. I have a very, very rudimentary understanding of the nuts and bolts of how digital works. I've tried to watch videos and read articles about the, on the topic, but my eyes start to glaze over and I get very confused and, and uh, so I, I kind of give up. So please do not think that I'm going to give you any kind of tutorial on how digital uh, signals and analog so signals are, are converted or processed. I, all I know is, you know, it goes in one end and comes out the other end, and this is how it sounds, right? Analog, analog is, I don't know, the simplistic way you can touch analog things, more or less. You can touch the grooves of a record. You could touch a, a tape. Um, and photographs, you can hold photographs in your hands, right? And, um, but digital, you can't really touch it. It's, it's in the ether. It's, you have to watch it on a screen. You can't carry it out of your house. It doesn't take up any mass or space in your, in your, in your living room. So you're thinking, hey, Dave, what about CDs? You can touch them, right? You can touch a CD and hold it in your hand. And I, th I was thinking, yeah, that's, that's true. And I'm thinking that the record companies and, you know, when they were uh, developing, when Sony and Philips were developing the digital format, they had, to be th they had to be thinking that, you know, people are used to discs. For decades, they've been using discs to listen to music. So let's make a disc kind of format that they can hold and it's kind of semi-familiar but it's shiny and futuristic and smaller and uh, this will be our way that we can deliver digital music in the future and uh, you know, let me tell you it was very successful it, it really caught on people like these things for a long time still do they sold billions of these suckers now to play it back that Digital data has to be converted back into analog. So it uses a, and we're going to talk about this today, a digital to analog converter. And the digital to analog converter turns the, the digital information back into an analog electrical signal that is then sent to an amplifier, which amplifies the signal to, and then sends that to speakers or a transducer of some kind and that converts the electrical signal back into sound waves uh, i hope i'm clear about that and i'm pretty sure i'm correct but i'm sure somebody will point out if i'm wrong at some point there digital to analog converters or dax dac are ubiquitous and they're everywhere i mean i want to go around my house right now and show you all the things in my house that have DAX inside. There's a DAC in there, maybe more than one. TV has a DAC. Yes, a DAC. A DAC. Not a DAC. Yep, there's a DAC in that. Nope, not a DAC. Yes, there's a DAC in that. 
And the deck in that is right there. Mainstream CD players had built-in decks. And you chose them by, you compared them by sound quality, features, and, and price. When did external DACs start to really catch on and become a common purchase for many enthusiasts? Uh, I don't know, but maybe it was when then it started to become possible to rip CDs and play them back on like your laptop. And, and then people started saying that the DACs built inside your computer was generally very cheap and lousy. They really weren't made to play back music really well. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, we were happy to plug our speakers or headphones into the 3.5 millimeter jacks in the side of our computers or iPods. And a few years ago, I started hearing about DACs and how audio enthusiasts needed them to get decent sound quality out of a computer. So I did some research and decided on an AudioQuest Dragonfly Black. And I connected it to my Mac Mini and I immediately could hear an improvement in sound quality. A few months later, I heard about a company called Shit who made budget-friendly hi-fi gear. And the Modi 3 had just been released to good reviews. And for, for $99, I decided to give it a shot. And I thought it actually sounded noticeably better than the, the Dragonfly. You may have an old CD player you bought in the 90s. And you're, maybe you've wondered, you know, can I inexpensively upgrade this old player with a modern DAC? But I don't want to spend a lot of money. Aren't DACs like computer chips? And aren't the latest computer chips way faster than anything that's 20 or 30 years old? You figure that, right? I've just recently been given the opportunity to audition and evaluate a Topping E30 DAC. I have noticed that Topping Gear has received a lot of good reviews over the past year, and I was curious to try out one of their models. So now I'm going to show you my vintage reference system. Oh, here's my Rego Planer 3 and Adcom amp that have been relegated to the foyer right now for this evaluation. Oh well. This home office is where I spend quite a lot of time, and unfortunately it's less than an ideal acoustic space. I think it's almost a, has cube dimensions. My amplifier is an Acoustat, or Acoustat, Transnova Twin 200. Now that's a mouthful. In 1982, the electrostatic speaker manufacturer wasn't that satisfied with the current crop of amplifiers to power their incredibly inefficient speakers. So they designed their own. And this is a 200 watt unit that can drive just about anything. I featured this Adcom GFP1 preamp in a previous video. It's a similar vintage to the amplifier and it may be old, but it works pretty well and sounds really nice. My reference speakers are these British Proac Response 2.5s, and they are amazing. In the mid to late 90s, they sold for like $4,500 new. And for such a simple design, they produce glorious sound and remarkable low frequencies. I'm going to compare the sound quality of the built-in DACs in three of my vintage CD players to the DAC inside this modern topping E30. On the back, the E30 has a pair of analog outputs, left and right, and three digital inputs, coaxial, optical, and USB. In order to be able to try this, you need a CD player with at least one digital output, and mine all have coaxial output jacks. The JVC is a nice $260 low to mid-range player from the late 80s. It's an attractive, full-featured model with an amber display that actually matches the topping. I've noticed recently that the JVC is getting temperamental and giving me no disc error messages. 
on the Van Morrison CD for no apparent reason. So I used another disc and it was fine. On its own, I think the JVC sound is rich, smooth, and very enjoyable. Very even sounding and not at all harsh. I, I have no problem with it at all. It sounds fine. Well, then I switched to the E30 and I noticed that the high frequencies were a bit more clear and audible using that, that external DAC. And the, the most noticeable difference though were the low frequencies. The topping just seemed to dig down more deeply than the JVC's own built-in processing could do. When I compare them head to head, I think I prefer the sound of the topping just a bit more. This is an Arcam Alpha 7 that I bought in Dunstable, England in 1997, I believe. I've always liked this Arcam, but sometimes I thought the high frequencies were a little harsh and fatiguing. During this comparison, I could definitely hear a difference with the E30 DAC connected. Primarily, the harshness and edginess was pleasantly tempered and smoothed out. And other than that, they presented dynamics fairly equally and went down low in a similar manner. The California Audio Lab's Icon Mark II CD player is from the early 1990s, priced at $995. In its day, it was marketed as a higher-end model than the JVC and RCAM. This is something. Aside from playing louder than the topping when I switched between the two, which required volume adjustment, they weren't that dissimilar. However, I had to have another listening session before I could hear that the California Audio Labs was a degree more dynamic and punchy. Now, the E30 sounded great, it has a more unified, slightly mellower presentation. It's still plenty dynamic, but less than the Icon Mark II. The topping may have met its match here. You know, I'm thinking the full talents of this topping DAC might be wasted just sitting on top of a CD player all day. I mean, it can handle a lot more like high-res streaming and has lots of other features that are quite useful. The dimmable display is a nice touch that provides you with the bitrate of the recording you're listening to as well as other status-related info to follow. The E30 can also be used as a simple one input desktop preamp. Connect the outputs on the back directly to a separate amplifier or powered speakers and then you can use the remote control to handle the volume. Now that's useful. It also has six different digital filter settings and the graphs look impressive but my ears were not really able to discern between them. Using this RCA splitter, I split the SPDIF coax signal from the USB port into each DAC, and then into separate inputs of my preamp. Now this evaluation was much more clear cut. The Topian E30 was significantly more dynamic and lively sounding. The Modi 3 sounded rolled off and dull in comparison. I mean, before I compared them, I thought the, the shit sounded just fine, but after a being them like this, I do prefer the sound of the topping. It's just more lively and enjoyable. I did this comparison again on my reference system and the difference between the two decks were actually more pronounced. The shit sounded fine, but it was not in the same league as the topping deck. Upgrading an old CD player with a modern deck is definitely worth a try. Obviously your results may vary depending on the CD player and the the DAC that you choose. I thought the this E30 was a fairly clear upgrade on two out of three of the CD players. On the third one I'm thinking now it was kind of a toss-up. I mean it becomes a matter of personal preferences of which you like but they both sounded very very good. I think the Topping E30 is a terrific little deck and I'm, and I'm genuinely impressed with it and they didn't seem to cut any corners in terms of sound quality, even with the extra functionality. I think the designers did a great job with the sound quality. And now I'm very curious to hear what kind of improvements I'll hear on a more expensive model.